Hey, what's going on, Ominous? What's up, man? Having a good time? I know it's a Saturday night. It's a late night stream. We're going to have some fun. I'm going to be up late probably anyways, so. I figured I would have some fun. spam a little bit of elvish here got a few friends to start new tunes on mischief we're doing some old rates dude that's awesome man what uh what level are you guys up to now that's cool that makes me want to join you guys and we only went to 65 that's cool man like i said that makes me makes me want to join you guys So what, do you, uh, what raids are you guys doing? What are you guys up to? Just got done with Kale Raid, now doing Plane of Fire. Nice. Wait. How many friends do you guys have? Are you guys boxing a whole bunch or something? Six of us, six box... Oh, Jesus. Six of us six boxing? Damn, dude. Well, if you guys want some company, let me know. I'll hop over on my rogue. My rogue is like 72, so... That's cool. You guys enjoying all the crazy loot? It's a clusterfuck, but it's fun. I can imagine. 24 characters at 65. I'm sure you guys are destroying. Sorry for the delay here, guys. We're spamming a little bit of Elvish here. I literally just made this character, so... It's a wee bit of a clusterfuck. Also, if my sound settings are a little, of off, little off, just let me know. Avatar of War dropped 12 items and it was all Vulak. Jesus Christ, dude. Yeah, dude, that sounds like a lot of fun. Like I said, if you guys have uh, an empty spot and you want a rogue to come along, just let me know. That'd be really fun. Especially seeing the kind of loot that you guys could get to drop from there. That's so cool. 12 items, though. Jesus. No wonder people got geared so fast on uh, Mischief. I'm glad you got some buddies to uh, to play with you, though. That's cool. Elvish is getting up there. Here, in just a second, we're going to pick up our Ranger spells. Having a really high intellect makes this go by really quick. Nice, 97. 
98, 99, 100. There we go. Language, Elvish. Okay, yeah, let's go buy uh, some ranger spells. Oh, I'm like out of spell slots here. That's a little bit of a problem. Dude, I came prepared for this ranger. I got like the best quiver that you can get at this level. I got the best arrows you can use for this level. The fastest bow you can use for this level. We're gonna be good. I think the ranger spells are just like right here. Druid spell, shaman. No, 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 ranger's up top. Ranger, there we go. Uh, a lot of this I'm really not gonna need. Don't need healing. Hashtag Ranger Gang, hell yeah, dude. I see you, Bow Druid. Yep. Not getting to a whole lot of these spells, but we'll make sure that we're semi prepared. Uh, maybe a little bit of healing. Yeah, dude, I'm I'm ready for this. Like I said, I got basically the best bow, the best arrows, the best quiver that we can use. I think 1 to 50 should be fine. We'll probably make it to 65 tonight, but... Oh, can you guys not hear me? Hello, hello. Okay, you hear me? Okay. Uh, I'm guessing Soap can't hear me. Oh, okay. My shit was muted? Okay. I was like, wait a second, what are you talking about, dude? I'm like, right here. Here, let me... That was my sound, by the way. Am I pretty loud, or do I need to deafen a little bit? Someone was muted then. Okay, okay, it wasn't me. <laughs> I was like, wait a second, what are you talking about? I'm sitting here like, you're not playing music or anything? Just fine. Okay, good, 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 good. I was like, what are you talking about? I'm right here. What, what's going on? <laughs> okay, no, 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 we're good. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Had me worried there for a second, man. Dude, it is like unexpectedly cold here right now. We literally went from having decent weather to having like really cold rainy weather and I'm fucking loving it. It's like 40 degrees outside right now. It's perfect gaming weather.
I got all my spells up to level 50 that I think are really going to be needed. We are good to go. Can't really be a bow druid without being a wood elf, though. And yes, I'm using a shield for now because I can't dual wield just yet. But soon. Okay, let's see. Look at that bow ornament. Probably catch up to me tonight. <laughs> it could. I, I very well could. 15%. Oh, that's not bad. Work on tracking and everything while we're going as well. I have to be careful because I have like a very limited amount of arrows here. So I'll probably do a little bit of a little bit of bow action, a little bit of melee action. Boom boom pet. about to hit 65 and I can finally get some decent weapons going. Nice, man. Do you have weapons uh, set aside? Is that just from the stuff that I sent you? What's nice is at 65, it literally like a plethora of weapons opens up for you. You could use anything from Plane of Time up to like the Fabled content weapons. <sighs> and Fabled weapons are just leaps and bounds above the rest. Because you can use, like, the Fabled, uh, what is it, Fabled Jagged Shard of Frozen Flame. It's, like, damage 38, delay 20. Found a couple cheaper 1.1 ratio weapons. In oh, that's still good. That's still some Gates of Discord stuff. Hey, what's going on, Beard? How's Quarm going? Your picture earlier inspired me. You shared that picture in Unrest, and I was like, oh, dude, I need to hop back on EverQuest. Just immediately made me want to hop back on EverQuest. I died and just... And, oh, dude. That's part of the fun, though, right? That is, I loved it, yep. At least you're having a good time with it, man. That's what it's all about, though. When we get to, like, level 20, I'm gonna end up bringing my Enchanter and Druid along with me so I can drop it, uh, empowered campfires. Let's mem our first couple of spells here. Or, never mind. Our single spell that we have for now. I said before, but I'm going to have to make sure I'm doing some of my spell casting. Let's see here. I got all these, I got all this fancy mana regeneration here, like 63 mana regen, and I'm never using spells.
it's crazy, man. I feel like I, I boot up the EverQuest directory to try to find people to watch these days. And literally everybody is either playing Quarm or P99. I don't see a single person playing live EverQuest. Which, don't get me wrong, I get it. It just kind of blows my mind. No live streamers ever? Yeah. I guess it takes a certain kind of person to want to stream live EverQuest. I have only watched you in one other live channel. Oh, Jesus. It's crazy. It, it just blows my mind. I feel like I there used to be so many more live streamers. I guess since Mischief is kind of like over the hill now, and people are already kind of done with Oakland, there's a lot of people who just aren't really playing any of that. I think you're the only live streamer I've ever seen other than Mischiefish. Wow. I guess there was a lot of Oakwind streamers for a bit. Yeah, there was a lot of Oakwind at first because everyone was like, oh, it's this shiny new toy. But then after that, like with Quarm, it has completely replaced like P99. It's Kuvan. Yeah, yeah. One of my real life friends is in her raiding guild on uh, Rizlona. So he like turns me onto her channel a lot. Yeah, like the only other guy I know that plays EverQuest in real life. He likes he likes her channel a lot. I think she also has kind of the advantage for being like one of the only female EverQuest streamers, considering the EverQuest demographic. Not to discredit her at all, but. Dudes will be dudes. Fizzling? What is all this fizzling? Like over here going out of my way to cast spells and I'm still fizzling. Oh, I had to allow that message. Lol. The neckbeard demographic? Yeah, dude, you got that right, Abe. Looked over at my chat window and I was like, who is it saying that was blocked? Neckbeard is flagged, apparently so, man. That cracks me up. Neckbeards are bad and okay. It's funny, just learning the the amount of words that are flagged for possibly inappropriate meanings. I only say that coming from P99 Red. <laughs> yeah. Oh, see? Look, I had to allow that message because it said you said degenerate. I've eaten like a couple of, like a complete degenerate today, dude. That sounds fucking good. Like what what are we talking here? What'd you eat, man? I'm intrigued. Let me live through you. You have some really friendly chat settings, I guess. I don't... I could have sworn I said it to, to be, like, really, really open and very unmodded. But there are literal nude streamers on Twitch. Yeah, there's the, that lady on Twitch that was literally live streaming, having sex, and she was only banned for, like, a day or two. But yet my bot is blocking people for using words like twink and degenerate and neckbeard. And butt and boobs. Those words are bad and good. There's a streamer who does body paint. She's completely nude with paint and it's all, oh, okay, well, I guess that's art. Anytime I get a recommendation for uh, a Let's Chatting streamer, I just block them. Yeah. Yeah. The Just Chatting stuff, I just never really know what to expect. The only time I watch the Just Chatting stuff is, like, I'll watch Asmongold when he, like, react streams. 
but that's because I, I get to see the truly degenerate side of the internet. I've had three ice cream sandwiches, like five or six sodas, two bowls of tricks, and a bowl of ramen with an egg in it. That egg makes it healthy. The egg does make it healthy. My first shot was uh, June 30th. So from June 30th to now, we're talking just about four full months, give or take. I'd say it's pretty good. The hardest part was like not cutting out everything because any crash course diet that I've always done, it's been basically, oh, cut everything out and eat healthy. But anybody who's ever been on a hardcore diet knows that that's not sustainable because eventually you're going to go back to the way you were eating before. So it's just been really tiny changes adding up. When I turned 39, I made a gold lose 40 by 40, hit it in three months. Hell yeah. That's what's up. I just, since I work in an office job, I know that I have to be really careful because like, let me give you an example. Monday is our Halloween event at my job. So like everybody's gonna dress up. The boss is bringing his, like the owner of the company is bringing his grandkids in. So we're all gonna be giving out candy and sweets and stuff like that. And they're providing Chipotle for us. So I'm gonna eat bad there. And then Tuesday is closing day at work, which means that they bring cupcakes and donuts for us. And like, there's just two big days out of every single month that they just bring tons of bad food for us. And that's like why 90% of the women I work with are all overweight. Got like 15 to go, but at least now I can run again. Hell yeah. Fall, winter starts out rough. Yeah, it's definitely that time of the year. Like, I mean, Thanksgiving is coming up. And like Thanksgiving is one of my favorite holidays for the food, so. It's just such an awesome time of the year though. And like being inside playing video games and being all comfy and shit while uh, eating good food. It's just a good, good time. Thanksgiving and Christmas crushed me, yeah, but that's where... Uh, oh, Matt has helped me. One meal a day. Oh, damn. Okay, so you do the fasting stuff. At least on bad days, I eat one meal and make it whatever I want. Yeah. Because at that point, you can literally, yeah, just eat whatever you want. Yeah, fasting was part of, like, what was recommended for me to do uh, on this medication. They recommend that you fast and basically just eat from like 1 p.m. to 7 p.m. every day. Which I really don't do, because if I do that, I don't get proper protein intake, and it kind of just completely circumvents the medication. Because I have to eat like 130 grams of protein a day. Do like a four to six hour window. Gotcha. Not always strictly one meal. Okay. Fair enough, though. Boom, level 10. Yeah, we don't have any of those spells learned yet, but we are gonna, however, put our new, put our illusions back on. It's like a protein shake bar at like 2 p.m. And dinner at six, yeah. Yeah, I have to get like over 100 grams of protein a day in. So if, I, if I'm not hitting that protein goal, then my body just doesn't lose the weight like it should. It's really strange. The body does really, really strange things. <laughs> Use that bow, let's go. Oh, 
Oh, it'd help if I turn auto fire on. Fancy looking bow. Oh yeah. It's uh, one of the ornaments from the new expansion pre-order. The, the bow, the shield, and the weapon I'm using are all ornaments from that. Yeah, I think they did a really good job with the weapon graphics. All these fancy clone weapons are sick. Yeah, these three, the, the weapons in general for this expansion are really good. And it's nice because they're not just, uh, <laughs> like, reskins. Because the last two or three expansions have all just been reskins of each other. Like, uh, I think the skeleton bow animation is nice. Yeah. Shades of WoW enchantment. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, I really like what they did with the weapon graphics. <laughs> Solid EXP here, though. <laughs> These guys really don't like Snare. I was really tempted to hop into Oakwind tonight and play a bit of Oakwind, but man, it ha I have to be like in a really certain mindset to want to be playing a really weak character. So I know that I'm either going to have to do group content or slow, uh, like solo really slowly. <laughs> And most of the time, I just want to hop in and I just want to be a really powerful character and do nothing. Little sense of invincibility for a little bit. I've been playing nothing but Baldur's Gate 3 for my last 60 hours of game time. Holy crap. You know, Baldur's Gate, it's on my list to play. A couple buddies of mine that have played it have talked about the amount of sex that you get to have in the game, and it cracks me up. You can definitely tell it's a game made by gamers for gamers. The combat just looks really fun. Party members be ready to go? Yep. <laughs> yep. Why is this vampire coming on to me? It's funny. Uh, my roommate is into that stuff. So immediately, whenever he got the game, I, I looked at him and I was like, all right, have you had sex with the bear yet? Be honest. <laughs> I like the Divinity games and that sort of combat. So Baldur's Gate 3 was going to be up my alley. Yeah. I have not personally yet, yeah. <laughs> Snared, get bowed. Not quite as impactful as uh, level 118 Berserker throwing axes. I'm pretty sure I offered to jump, jump in when I met who I presume that meme is about. Probably so. <laughs> the dialogue choice is just lean that way. That sounds about right. Ha <laughs> 
<laughs> Alright. I think we have a couple new spells now. Oh, we got Eagle Eye. Not, or, sorry, Hawkeye, not Eagle Eye. Brr. Man, just even talking about chrono prices and stuff uh, earlier, just like 10 hours ago when I was streaming, then like the amount of prices and stuff that I've seen just drop on everything. I'm already seeing like spectral Luckonite weapons selling for 10 million platinum. When just 10 hours ago, they were 15 million. <laughs> or it's just the same people who are desperate to sell the items that they've dropped the price substantially. Which I'm leaning towards that. Like the best weapons in the game right now selling for basically a single chrono worth of uh, platinum. People cashing out or something. It seems like a lot of people are just trying to get rid of the items since the expansion is going to be dropping in like a month and a half. I guess a whole lot of people really leaned into investing in these items, thinking that they were going to get a good return out of them. But the thing about like EverQuest, only really good twink items really maintain a sense of investment and value. Everything else just drops like a fucking rock. Especially in-game items that are going to be replaced within the next year anyways. Because only a small portion of people are ever going to use items over level 75 anyways. So, I mean, if you're planning on investing in expensive, high-end quality items right now, it's just not worth it unless you're going to use it and know that it's just going to be worthless. Twink items forever are going to maintain their value, though. Like, Mace the Ancients and stuff like that. And earlier, I was talking about there was like 15 people selling Equipinus. Like, the one-hand piercer item I was talking about for Twinks. And when I tried to buy one earlier, they were all gone. I had to, like, move one over from one of my other characters. I had no idea why they were all gone. Maybe the bazaar shut down earlier or something? Yeah, there's none for sale. Kind of surprising. Yeah, it's really weird. Hey, what's going on, Rackback? How you doing? I gotta keep working on this tracking stuff. Oh, we're already getting critical damage bow shots. 64. Nice. I'm gonna get dual wield here in just a minute so we can take off our shield. that sweet, sweet dual wheel of action and Good watching streams in Common Lens Tunnel. Nice. Looking for some good items. Oh, we can't do well just yet. I guess it's 15 then. 14 or 15, one of the two. <laughs> Let's 
17 for Ranger. Oh, damn, that's much later on. Is that dual wield or double attack? I feel like that's double attack, but I might be wrong. Maybe it is much later on. Whatever decent druid gear that won't break the bank. Ah. That sounds about right, I think so. Uh, what server? Rack, what are you, what are you talking Is this Oakland that we're talking about here? Gotcha. Dude, I know it's expensive as hell, but like the Elder Spirit of stuff is really nice because it's got tons of mana regen on it. If you can get yourself like a really, uh, like an Emerald Scimitar of Emerald Dawn. That's what I used on my Druid, especially for soloing a lot. Because it's got a decent damage delay ratio. But it's 100 mana on it that's super nice. Mm. We're going to lose our haste and region here in a second. Won't have Epic anytime soon, so that might be good. Yeah, Scimitar of Emerald Dawn, or the... Uh, you're almost level 20, so the mistletoe sickle thing is pretty good, too. I think it's got, like, 35 mana on it, a pretty good damage delay ratio. You could also use, like, a Madman's Mace. Or Mad Madman's... I think it's called Madman's Mace. It's like 8-20. It's a pretty good ratio. As a druid, you'll have quite a few options for good weapons. It just really depends on whether or not you want it to have mana. But like the 100 mana on a Scimitar of Emerald Dawn is just unreplaceable. And it feels like the scimitar you get enough of, or there's enough of them selling that they're not too expensive. Ooh, tracking 22. It's watching your Zerker video with crazy throwing weapons, so funny. Yeah. It's funny because I felt spoiled by the damage I was doing with that, that now that I'm only hitting for, you know, 40s and 50s and 60s with the, the bow and arrow here. I'm like, oh man, I was already hitting for 300 on my Berserker. I definitely want to do another another one of those pretty soon. Hey, what's going on, lady? How you doing? Good evening. You know, it'd probably help if I stopped uh, and mem spells. I got so focused on trying to get high enough level to dual wield that I haven't stopped to do that. Just watch in a moment. No worries. How do you do with the monsters who later on hit you like a truck? It really depends. I mean, uh, what level are you having issues with, lady? Are we talking 75? Are we talking 80, 90, 100? Because I have some pretty good recommendations for anything up to like level 100, but everything after 100, the best thing I can really say unfortunately is to make sure that you have like gold access 
and uh, you got all AAs unlocked. Highest level I ever saw is 62. So, I mean, stuff does kind of substantially start to hit a little bit harder after 60s, but the best thing you can really do is make sure that you're using around that level Defiant gear. Uh, because Defiant gear has really good stats on it. It'll beef up your defense, it'll beef up your HP, your strength, and all that. So around that level, like Defiant gear, depending on the server that you're playing on. If you're playing on a live server, using a good journeyman mercenary and using Defiant gear will pretty much carry you into your 70s. Monsters kill the gold merc that was with me. And when I try to pet class, the pets died real quick too. Uh, which monsters are you fighting? Are we talking like Gates of Discord monsters? If you're following the hot zone list and you're going to zones that are known for like, they're from the Gates of Discord expansion, those enemies are known for hitting substantially harder. And the best thing I can recommend is not doing those zones. Even me, who goes in typically incredibly overgeared, I will actively avoid some of the hot zones that are recommended just because of how difficult they are. Those ones with the giants. Um, giants. That sounds. That sounds like it might be one of the gates of Discord zones. The shamans. Hmm. Yeah, I'm really not sure in that case, but if it's one of the hot zones... Oh, uh... Hmm. Maybe, uh... Bastion of Thunder? Yeah, Torden Bastion of Thunder? Because those guys do start to hit quite a bit harder, yeah. And a lot of it... Yeah, it's the hot zone? Yes. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so Bastion of Thunder... If, you're, if you put on Defiant gear, which I think around that level is like uh, intricate Defiant gear, that should help you a lot. We started the plane of knowledge. Yep, yep. Yeah, if you're... Then go north to the zone. Yeah, it sounds like you go through Plane of Tranquility. And then it sounds like... Yeah, it sounds like either Drunder, Fortress of Zek, or uh, Bastion of Thunder. Because if it's if it's Tactics, Plane of Tactics, if you go to either north or the south wings, those enemies are all like level 69. And those are like... They're meant to be raid encounters, so you don't really want to go through that. It's the whole place just out of the zone here. Um, yeah, it really sounds like we're talking either Plane of Tactics or Bastion of Thunder. They shouldn't hit too hard if you're fighting like equal level enemies. It really sounds like getting better gear is like the first thing that I would recommend. Because typically, it sh they shouldn't be killing your mercenary too fast unless you're fighting a whole bunch of high up, a whole bunch of enemies at the same time. Can't recall the names at the minute. That's okay. If you end up thinking of them, let me know. But I can definitely give you some good recommendations. Oh, the giants north of Garako Mesa. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, okay, so those guys hit ridiculously hard, yes. The Serpent Spine enemies are overtuned significantly because it's all done with the expectation that you either have raid gear or you have a full set of defiant gear. So it's it's done with the expectation that you have like a lot of heroic stats as well. So if you're in your sixty uh, in your sixties, yeah. Yeah, the game unfortunately will tell you. It'll tell you some stuff like that, but I think it's all done with the expectation by that time that you have pretty good gear. If you're in your 60s, 
I would say probably the best place to go would either be like Plane of Tactics or Bastion of Thunder like we were just talking about. Because those zones will carry you into your 70s. They really don't hit too hard. They don't have too much HP. But yeah, like, and after, like, the the Mesa, Garakar, Garakar, Mesa, whatever it's called, after that and Serpent Spine, it's all done that either, it's done with the expectation that you're done, that you're with a group or you're really geared out with Defiant stuff. Would you believe I tried Enchanter? Oh, you uh, tried Enchanter? See, I had, a, I had a really good time with Enchanter when I tried Enchanter. It just got a lot more difficult in the 60s because the like the charm kiting I was doing before was unfortunately no longer viable. You probably know what you're doing, me, I epically failed. It's okay, that's kind of common. There are a lot of players who, we even talked about this recently in some of my other streams, that unfortunately, there's not much guidance for new players out there, where if you're not, if you're either A, not communicating with other people in a guild or getting help with friends, uh, the game doesn't really do a good job of communicating where you should go or what you should do. Yeah, uh, it will tell you a lot of times to go to places that are going to be really bad for you. It'll it'll just send you off in a really bad direction. What's going on, Grizzle? It'll be really bad, some of the places it'll tell you to go. Here, I'm going to rebuff this guy real quick. I was so upset I thought I was doing something wrong, I quit. No, you definitely, unfortunately, it, it'll it'll send you in bad places. I really say, like, leveling in the Serpent Spine from like one to 40 is probably pretty good. But then after that, you should probably switch lanes over to either Valius or Kunark content. And then like probably 50 plus, you can level in Planes of Power from like 50 to 65. I'm recently a returning player. I haven't played since uh, God, I think it was. Rolled a brand new character on Barry Navi. Oh, nice, dude. This is the place right here. Yes. Yep. Yep. Gurukar Mesa. Do we need to learn languages to talk to other people? Yes, Geezer. On Barry Navi, there is no common tongue like there is on other servers. Since it's a role playing server, the mutually agreed upon language to communicate with other people here is Elvish just made a fresh character on Bristlebane. Oh, nice. That's another pretty popular server, I think, Makin. But yes, the role troll. So you can teach yourself English. If you go to your guild master and put one point into Elvish and you spawn a mercenary in your group, you can just spam Elvish to yourself and your mercenary and you'll level up Elvish. I haven't played in ages. I was on Mischief last time I was playing. Mischief is another pretty popular server, but unfortunately it's very top heavy right now. Very, very top heavy. So you'll have a hard time finding other players to play with low level. You have Charles on Prexus? Oh, nice. Here in a V is pretty much like my home. This is where I spend like 90% of my time. Played mage to see how good the pet was. Mage pets eventually end up becoming the best pets in the game. Once you get high enough level, you get uh, minion buffs on items that increase the level of your character, of your pets, and it makes them insane. 
Better than Necro Pets? Yes, better than Necro Pets. But I've heard since the Absence FE is the most popular server. Yes, Spirion of E is the highest population server. Maybe second only to Oakwind right now. Oakwind is probably like the top right now because it's the newest, shiniest toy. But FB is the most consistently high population server. There were tons in Blooming Deep, yeah. There was also another, there was a YouTuber recently that did a video covering EverQuest. And it kind of, every time like a big YouTuber does a video like that, it brings an influx of new people in. So I think that's kind of what's happening. But FB is the most populated server because there's a 50% EXP bonus over other servers. Everything is free trade. So all like the most best, like epic items that you can use on characters are all free trade. Uh, like I said, the only problem is that a lot of people don't realize is that it's a role playing server. So you have to learn Elvish to communicate with other people. Not the actual epics, right? Yeah, you can't trade the actual epic items, but just the best items. Didn't know that. Yeah. Shaman's a fun class. You should have a good time playing on that. Starting from absolute scratch. It's going to be tough for you if you're starting from scratch. It can be really tough. The best thing I would recommend for any person who is a new player in the game is to join a guild. Number one, play in a popular server, and number two, join a guild. On Ferian of E, the guild you really want to join is Emerald Alliance Reborn. You level mighty fast, yeah. It's because I'm using the best gear in the game for a level one character. I plan on it with the language thing. Yeah, like I said, the best option is to go to your guild master, put one point into Elvish, set your language to Elvish, and then summon your mercenary and just spam yourself. And you'll get Elvish up to 100 pretty quick. I'm 58 and it's starting to slow down. Yeah. Most of us don't have that kind of, yeah. It's not common to have that kind of loot. But that's why I level so fast. It's also because I've invested so much time and effort into Fear and V that I haven't had to buy new items. All these items I'm wearing are tradable. So whenever I'm done with this character, I can take these items and put it on a new character. All decked out and banded, let's go. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, Beard. Yeah, all these items I have, when I'm done with this character, I can just take it, slap it on a new character, and I'm good. Full banded man. The best thing I can recommend about EverQuest, like I said, is to join a popular, populated server and join a guild. Emerald Alliance is like the biggest guild on this server, and I joined them whenever I came back over three years ago. And like the first thing that they did was like offer to help. Like, hey, what do you know? What do you need help with? What are you trying to do? They gave me suggestions on like websites to check out for leveling guides, items to farm for myself, just things to do. They do giveaways. They, there are tons of people on this server that will go out of their way to give items to new and returning players to make it a better experience. Fear in a V can be pretty top heavy, but there are so many players that actively make new characters and level them from like 1 to 75 over and over and over again. Normally the skeletons would ravage people. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Why to 75? 75 is when a lot of people drop off and they make new characters. Because that's typically the, the kind of content that they enjoy doing the most. And it's also... Because if you're playing free-to-play, it's after level 75 that AA start becoming required. 
and if you're free to play, you're limited on the number of AAs that you can get. So people will get to 75 and get to the point to when AAs are required, and they'll just make a new character. I was wanting to do Wizard, but I don't have the patience or the cash to do it. I mean, you could. You could still could. Like I said, if, like, if you're playing and you're paying attention to the loot that you're getting to drop, you're typically going to get a lot of Defiant gear to drop. Or stuff like this. I mean, even these items right here that I'm getting, you can slap on a new character and you'll end up getting geared out. Like all this Defiant gear. My EverQuest cache crashed now and my EverQuest window is opened up off screen and I can't get it back on screen. Uh, have you tried rebooting? I hate to be like the IT guy that's like, have you turned it off and back on? But that really sounds like that might be the best option. Like a reboot might be the best option for you there, man. Tried windows and arrow keys, nothing is working. Right click on the windows toolbar and select cascade windows to get all your windows on screen. There we go. There we go, we got someone in with the save. Oh, here also. Windows 11 doesn't have cascade windows. Let me see here. Hey, thanks for the follow. Easier, I appreciate you. I haven't had to use it on Windows 11 yet, strange. Uh, when do you stream? I try to stream at least two or three times on the weekends. And uh, I'll stream a little bit during the weekdays. But most of the time I'm just a weekend streamer because I work a full-time job. But yeah, I'll stream like around this time on week uh, weekends, and I'll stream early morning Saturdays and early morning Sundays. I want that gnome pirate illusion so bad. Anyway, thanks for being awesome. Well, thank you, Cheryl. I hope you end up getting things to work out, so it actually makes you want to stick around. Just know that there can be some things that are kind of a struggle in EverQuest to do. But the best option is to really go to a different zone. Sherry, sorry. Some some of the times, some of the zones that it refers you to are just going to be really bad. And you might just want to go to a different zone. Even if it's a hot zone, or if it's like part of like the uh, hero's, hero's journey and stuff like that. Some of those zones are just really not good zones to go to. I just happened to log on, uh, log off game. I have to get up and work for six hours with two I for answering the questions I had. No problem. Yeah, dude. Uh, my, my stream times are kind of random, but like the most guaranteed thing I can say is like Saturday mornings, Sunday mornings, and a little bit throughout the week. I'll look for you next time. I appreciate it. Spiders and stuff in the place above that mist, it just tears people apart. Yeah, those spiders and everything will start to hit substantially harder. What's going on, Day? How you doing, man? Anything that's like Serpent Spine content after level 40, they just hit ridiculously hard. It's all done that, with the expectation that you have AAs and Defiant gear. But your casting skills, it's actually pretty good, man. I've been working on it. So it wasn't just me? No, it's definitely not just you. I would, I would recommend, like, stepping back to Planes of Power content, like Plane of Innovation, Bastion of Thunder, Plane of Tactics. Those zones are going to be much better. But yeah, you'd be amazed today. I've got, like, Alteration up, Evocation. I've got spells and everything here. Elsewhere would be so proud. I 
I'm getting an itch to make four box and go through Hero's Journey when I don't feel like roughing it out in farm. You should try it, man. Especially if you can end up getting the, uh, the Draken Illusion Clicky. Is this a Chrono Trigger? Uh, it could be. It says Secret of Mana, so I don't think it's Chrono Trigger. I remember when uh, thinking pop content hit hard. It did hit hard back in the day, but comparatively speaking, uh, it's not near as hard as like Gates of Discord and Serpent Spine. Like Gates of Discord and Serpent Spine stuff just hits so hard. the game wants me to die or something it de it definitely will feel like that gates is very hard they have tuned in reigns a, uh, a bit ever since yeah the game wants everybody to die yeah the game really wants everybody to die like i've said it a lot in streams but for new people who don't uh who haven't seen me before i say it's typically not ever quest unless you're dying so it's a good time once once you start dying because it makes the game feel like a, a bigger challenge. Take what I'm saying with a grain of salt, though, because you see what I'm doing here. So, no more corpse runs. So easy quest. That's true. Thank God, Corpse Runs Blue Dong. <laughs> Corpse Runs and Planet Fear at level 50 were challenging. Yeah, that's a good way to, that's an easy way of putting it. Gates was the first expansion that re uh, really should. Uh, shook a uh, rating guild, yeah. Really stuck rating guilds, yeah. Yeah, Underfoot's just stupid. I I feel like Gates of Discord content recovered it by being original and cool content and cool illusions and everything, and Underfoot just sucks. There's no recovering Underfoot, I'm sorry. I I'll say nice things about tons of tons of different EverQuest content, but un Underfoot I won't say a single thing, single nice thing about. I just deleted my... I don't know why it blocked out that. And it started the game again and it's good to go. Is it like your INI file that you deleted or something, man? Client, yep. Unfortunately, the progression guilds have, uh, I've been in all, have all seemed to implode a few expansions before Underfoot, so I never got into that expansion. Oh man. Well, Mischief is just about to unlock on uh, Underfoot. I've always wanted to see the end game, but never have. There's a lot of really cool content that EverQuest has released over the last couple of years that unfortunately a lot of people will never get to see. I think this is the hot zone right now, so we should be good here up until 40-ish. I'm going to be back to raiding until I retire in about 10 years into that point. I have, uh, I get home after the raid guilds or, yeah, retire until 2023 or so, yeah. Now you're doing what I did, but not as geared, though. Yeah. I 
That's because no one wants to raid or step foot into Underfoot. <laughs> That's putting it lightly, man. Just something about the Underfoot content. Just really, I really don't like, man. Never done any Underfoot content. And it sucks because it's just before, like, one of the best expansions in the game. House of Thule. At least House of Thule does end up, like, recovering the content. Just getting there. Ugh. The place north of it, or are we talking? Yeah, the Mesa. Yeah. Yep. The the steps. Hey, thanks for the follow, Christopher. Yeah, th those zones after that just really start to hit, hit way too hard. What I'll typically do is if I really want like a fast leveling route, I'll level from like one to one to thirty-five or so between Crescent Reach and uh, the Moors, and then after the Moors, I'll switch over to probably Valia, uh, Valius content like Velks. It's too hard for my taste. Yeah, they really do. I'll hit uh, I'll hit like Velks, and then after forty-seven, forty-eight. You could switch to Plane of Justice, or even go over to uh, Plane of Innovation. And then after Plane of Innovation, you can switch back over to... You have a few different options, but I'll typically jump up to like uh, Bastion of Thunder. And then I'll stay there until like mid-60s. I mean, seriously, the monsters just ignore stuff and run right into your face and then wreck you? Yeah. Your mercenaries are, like, your tank mercenary, you, you really need a gold status journeyman tanks mercenary. And even still, like you were saying earlier, Sherry, that they'll just wreck you. You aren't missing much bearded unless you're into BDSM with no loot. I mean, that's a good way to describe Underfoot. He just died real quick, yeah. That's also where boxing or grouping is going to start being like the ex expected thing for certain areas. Where you're basically going to need a, like a second character and then a, a healing mercenary to keep that journeyman tank mercenary alive. Let's switch up our weapons a little bit here to work on our piercing. Yeah, it's 62. Like the you're the perfect level to be in either Bastion of Thunder or Drunder Fortress of Zek. But it will be harder if you're not boxing and if you're not geared. Like it even slows down for me around that level range. I don't box, that's fair, yeah. So with not boxing, if you're I mean, the, the next best option is going to be looking into uh, better gear. A 
You're a long ways away from home there, Mr. Trant. So long as a bard at the minute at 59. Moloing, yeah. for the price of one. I enjoy boxing. I think it's fun. I really do, too. Like, especially the ones that are easier, so I can just kind of tag them along. Bards as well. Try to stick to classic through 1 to 65 for the fact of less HP mobs. Yeah. I like to think the content for, like, around 75 to 80 has a certain charm. But after level 80, it just becomes so inflated. <laughs> Very into Vexars. Uh, really? Yeah, I fucking love Vexar. Bards never appeal to me. I think that's fair. Bards for me up until uh, recently, I wasn't really a big fan of, but I, I love them now. Especially for boxing. Just having playing, uh, like singing along behind me. Gribbles, yep. Was my ranger, was this OP? Those stats are crazy. <laughs> yeah. The good old twink items, man. Hope you're doing well. I'm doing good, man. I hope you are as well. I know I'm not normally streaming at this time, but one of my buddies here, Bearded, shared a picture in chat, in our Discord chat, and got gave me the EverQuest itch. And here we are. We're doing really good. We're just gaming along. I don't really have a goal in mind or anything here. Just want to play and have, some, have a good time. Oh, you know what I haven't done this entire time? Uh, completely forgot about my... My damage shield. I should have a much higher damage shield here. Completely noobed out. I'd love to level wizard. I just don't want to get destroyed after one wrong spell. It really depends. I mean... Let's see here. If you have a mount as a wizard, that would make it a lot easier. So you can actively do stuff while casting while moving. Well, not necessarily casting while moving. You can move quicker and then still med between casts without having to stand up and sit down. All right, we should have a much higher damage shield now. Should make this a little bit easier. Mounts make a lot of the stuff for casters so much easier. And buy clarity potions as well, yep. One of the best purchases I ever made was the, like, the expansion mounts, because they come with buffs that really increase your stats. Like, this is the one for Knight of Shadows, where it automatically increases your innate mana regeneration by 42, and you can use it at level 1, so it's, like, better than Clarity. Nothing only sold those in the shop. Nope. No, there's a vendor in Plain of Knowledge, a potion vendor. They'll sell healing potions, clarity potions, HP potions. At least I'm pretty sure they sell clarity potions. I could be wrong, though.
Another class I'd love to see for myself was an Enchanter. Enchanterite, like I said, I, I leveled one of those recently and I had a really good time. Especially in the, the lower levels, like Charm Kiting and stuff like that. That was a lot of fun. I never gave Chanters their due credit until I played one. You know, I haven't even stopped to check what the hot zones are. Could be getting even better EXP. I think I'll end up making an enchanter on Quarm eventually. Nice. Any particular reason? Leveling a Pally on Warmane. Nice, day. So you're having a good time on the, uh, the WoW emulated servers? That's awesome. I don't think I ever tried any WoW emulated servers. Thinking of starting a Night Elf Hunter when the progression server drops in November. Is it an emulated progressive uh, progression server? I was gonna say I don't remember seeing anything official. I keep hearing rumors about like Classic Plus, but I guess we're supposed to see it at BlizzCon next weekend if they're gonna announce anything through Warming. Oh, gotcha. Okay. I'm excited to see what they might do with uh, World of Warcraft next. There are, have already been some leaks about potential new servers, and a lot of people are pretty not happy. Let's see here. Let's mim some new spells here. Stinging Swarm. There we go. Or it starts with classic and then goes to TBC and then Wrath of Lush King. A couple won. They took a lot of fun to solo. They look like a lot of fun to solo, and then uh, Negras look like a ton of fun. They're a good class. A good class to make money. Nice. Thank Quarm for WoW. Oh, okay. So it's like. Very, very basic, old-school version. Necromancer is a class I'm really looking forward to starting on Oakland pretty soon. We got a few. Well, it's a good thing we're practically invincible at this level.
Fizzle, 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 fizzle. With that gear, you could swarm the zone just about, yeah. What's funny is, as geared out as I am, mercenaries are still way, way better than I have, uh, way better than I am as far as stats are concerned. Especially like once we get into our 40s, mercenaries will just like suddenly double and triple in stats. Damage shields being like 3x on them is weird too. Look at all that fizzling. What's nice about all these illusion buffs that I have as well is every 10 levels, they get better stats. So like my poison proc will hit for higher damage, my damage shield does more damage, my uh, increased piercing damage does more damage, my increased crushing damage does more damage. When I first saw your name I thought it was Bow Turd. I, you know, that would have been a good idea. I could have gone with Bow Turd. It would have matched my druid with stinging farts. Yeah, dude, I saw that. That's super fucking sad. And he died in a drowning accident, apparently. What a fucking bummer. Not doing donations for Extra Life? No, I donated myself. I haven't been streaming for it, because I don't think I'm a big time enough streamer to, to, to even worry about it. Yeah, it's a shit way to go, for sure. Nah, Vantos, maybe next year, if I stick with streaming, if I, if I feel like I'm a big time enough streamer to do something like that, I'll probably end up doing like a donation thing for it. Otherwise, I just donated myself. Thinking there's more. I do have really relapsed and had a heart attack or something. You don't just drown in your hot tub. Oh, it was in a hot tub that he drowned? Bruh. No, man. I didn't know that. I didn't even see one streamer on their list. Yeah, I didn't realize it was a heart attack. All I saw was like whenever the news announced that it was just like he drowned. I didn't know that he had a heart attack and died in his hot tub. Poor guy. Surprised no one was with him, yeah. Damn, feels bad, man. No, not at all, man. 
Yeah, I, I saw that he had died. I was just like, whoa. It caught me off guard. One of those things, you know what I mean? Get our buffs back on here. No, I think we can move over to skeletons over here. I have some higher level enemies. No worries. Uh, don't worry about it, Sherry. Let's see if we got some skeletons over here. Here we go. Spam! Hey, thanks for the follow. Have a good night as well. I'll see you around. Oh, here. We need to put our new minion back up. Been literally playing all day. Man, I was so jealous when you talked about how you were sick and you were staying at home to play video games. Uh, yeah, me and Dave both are fucking jealous. I think I saw that one, like, while I was on break at work. And I was just like, that motherfucker. Getting to live the life. much though to be fair i was legit sick i tried to yeah yeah that's a different story when you're so sick that it's just not a good time that obviously does make a difference look at all those fizzles Bone chill, kind of sick. Oh, that does suck. Was it was it the Rona man? Obviously, you don't have to say yes or no, but that, that like that's the last time I was really truly sick. That's what what it made me think of. I don't know if I bet if I was a betting man. Yeah, I know that there was like another big spike recently in that. So. Only reason I thought that. Since I'm the trainer at my job, I deal with uh, all the influx of new employees coming in. And coincidentally, around the time that I start like taking people out of my training room, from like the first couple of weeks that they're at the job, they're in my training room doing the work with me. And then coincidentally, around the time that I always move them out to their own little desk on the actual floor, they almost always end up getting sick. And last time that it happened, thankfully, like right as I was moving these people out to their desks, they all came down with COVID. So I never had to experience it or be around it. I was so fucking happy. I was like, oh God, don't be getting me sick, man.
COVID is pretty rough, yeah. I've had it twice now. That's another reason why I just don't want to have another bout with it. Last time I drank a Corona, I got sick. All right, day. I had a year or so back, I had a kidney stone at the same. Oh, I think I remember you talking about that, man. That's that's insanity. I wouldn't wish kidney stones upon like many people. Let's just put it that way. I wouldn't say nobody. There's a few people. Live life uh, on hard mode for those days. <laughs> yeah. Look at all those spell casting skills, Day. The Ranger using spells. Not just little melee machine. I'm looking at my other character's screen, and in general chat, people are talking about Matthew Perry. <laughs> and someone said, uh, it, it's weird. He, It seems odd that he drowned in his bathtub. And someone said, yeah, a lot of people do. Watch Friends, I mean. A lot of people watch Friends, not drown in their bathtub. <laughs> like, what? What? What a strange connection there. forgot to cast Enduring Breath. Oh, that is so soon, my friend. So soon. <laughs> oh, he got debuffed. Rip. Snared underwater. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> At least we all have a dark sense of humor. Had he cast dead man floating, he wouldn't have been a dead man floating. <laughs> oh, that that is that is rough indeed. That was good. Yep. There's a kind of dark humor I need on a Saturday night. Apparently his swimming skill was low. Yeah, apparently so. Like running out of stamina in World of Warcraft.
in his best Chandler Bing voice. Could I be any more dead? <laughs> I'm happy that I was never like a huge friend, uh, friends kind of uh, enjoyer. My parents watched it all the time when they were like when I was younger. I think what I know him most was the whole nine yards. The whole nine yards and the whole ten yards. Those two movies with him and what was his name? Bruce Willis. Those movies I thought were absolutely great. That's what I remember him from. So, I mean, we're talking like circa, what, 2001, 2002, maybe? Those were great, yeah. I thought those movies were fucking awesome. That was like peak comedy time back in the day, when basically any jokes were on the table. Watched it at dinner with my mom as a kid, not because I loved it or anything, because it was uh, while we ate. That and Seinfeld, yep. Seinfeld, Friends, uh, my parents really liked, uh, what was it, Will and Grace. And uh, trying to think, like, what other Seinfeld, what is it? Uh, there's another one I can't remember. There were so many sitcoms. In the, in the 90s. ER. ER. Everybody loves Raymond. That's another one. We watched the drama ER a whole lot back in the day. <laughs> Frazier. There we go. Yep. Amanda Pete in the whole nine yards was hot. I was waiting for someone to say something like that. Someone's always got to bring up the boobies. Looking forward to the Frasier remake. High hopes for it. I get a lot of crap from people for like my favorite shows back in the day like that. Around that time, like my favorite actual TV shows at the time, like uh, was House, like House MD. I fucking loved that TV show, even though how medically inaccurate it was. That was one of my favorite shows. I watched that all the way through graduation, like high school. House was good, yeah. House I really liked, and uh, I just had another one on my mind, but I just completely lost it. Scrubs was good comedy, yeah. Both great shows, yeah. Man, I can't... There was another one. Cheers, yeah, there we go. House, and... What was the other show I watched a lot? Well, must not be that important, because I can't remember the name. Oh, Big Bang Theory. I was really into Big Bang Theory. Bones. Angel. Oh, dude, day. I should have known you were an angel. Uh, angel enjoyer. I should have known. Nothing. Just an astute observation. A hey, 35. We need to teleport back and get our Enchanter and Druid buffs here. We've been without haste and big boy thorns for a while.
Let's go get our rebuffs going on here. Fucking X Files, yes. There you go. That takes me back. X Files, man. And it's it's hard to believe that they've already done like a reboot of uh, X Files, and that's already come and gone too. X Files, Third Rock from the Sun. Uh, there was another one that was filmed in my hometown. X Files. Try to rewatch X Files. It doesn't hold up. I I could imagine it definitely doesn't hold up. I'm sure it really doesn't. There's no way. Cause so much of that of that like stuff back in the day was all about like suspense. It was suspense of belief basically, and it was all based off of like it's lots of like it's very very cringy. I almost want to say. A lot of that stuff would definitely be considered cringy these days. It's almost like early season Supernatural stuff. And that's one of my favorite TV shows of all time. Fringe. That's fair. I don't think I've ever seen it. I think my roommate watches that, though. The only shows I really never got into was, like, the Stargate stuff. I was never a big fan of any of the Stargate TV shows. Stargate and Star Trek, not a big fan. You would like Supernatural? Yeah, dude, I fucking love Supernatural. My main character, like my main rogue's last name for like the first two years was Winchester. I have every episode of Stargate on DVD, every variation. Nice. Am I out of arrows? Oh, I'm out of arrows. Damn. Hey, what's going on, pool boy? Yeah, like my my rogue's last name for like the first year of my, me doing YouTube videos. His last name is Winchester. Yeah, Supernatural, I'm a big fan of for sure. V seems to be a Sam fan. Well, considering my first name is actually Sam, it would fit if that were true, yes. Me and the wife are on season 12 at the minute. It gets really good later on, but it also gets like very heartbreakingly bad right at the end. And by bad, just because it's it's like it's over kind of thing. No spoilers. Oh, okay. Yeah. I used to watch Reboot. I don't think I've ever seen Reboot. Spoiler free, it's a great show, man. I prefer sci-fi. Oh yeah, I'm big on sci-fi. Really big sci-fi. Want to watch Mr. Robot all the way through? Show my girlfriend reboot the other day and she laughed at the animation design. We've enjoyed a lot of Supernatural so far. Yeah. Awesome TV show. My roommate tried to get me into Supernatural like six or seven years ago. I just laughed because I was like, oh, it's so cringy looking. And then I started watching season seven and I've just loved it ever since. I have not seen Warehouse 13, but I've heard of it though. I feel like I've heard of it. But no, I haven't seen it. Let's see here. 
Okay, we got all the spell. Ooh, here we go. Couldn't get into Eureka. There's a lot of sci-fi shows that I just can't get behind because I think that they're very cringy. And I don't mean that in a bad way because a lot of people love that kind of style. But they're cringy to me because it's really difficult for me to get behind a lot of topics that are never really explained. It's really hard for me to describe it. The acting is typically kind of low budget in a lot of those. And that's coming from someone who likes Supernatural, where that acting is very clearly low budget. Bodies just come out of uh, on Netflix, and it was pretty damn good. Okay, the TV show I watched recently, which was awesome, is on Netflix. It's called uh, The Fall of the House of Usher. It was from the same people who did The Haunting of Hill House and The Haunting of Bly Manor. Awesome. I liked that. That seems like very high budget, very gory, very scary. Sci-fi stuff, but also like scary stuff I'm usually really into. My wife watched that, said it was based on Ed Edgar Allan Poe. It wouldn't surprise me. Just had a show recommended to me called Dark. It's about time travel. Ooh. Let's see here. Dark TV show. Dark. Oh, it's 2017. Oh, there's only three seasons? One of the top searches is why is Dark so good? Kind of watching Follow House of Usher soon, and yeah, it's based off those stuff. It 100% makes sense. It is very good, though. I haven't today. I haven't personally. It's supposed to be really good. It's in German. Oh, that's even better. Every time someone says something, uh, anything in German, I just can't help but go, Das Boot! From uh, Beer Fest. That's immediately what it takes me to. Das Boot! I was walking through a store and saw Squishmallow Cthulhu. I fucking want it. I need it. Think about Crank and Wagon. How it's so aggressive. <laughs> now I need to watch Beer Fest again. Everything in that language is so German. Ja, das ist gut. As someone who took six years in German through junior high and high school just so I could cuss in German. And it wasn't just because that, but like, I'm like 60% German, so. I'm reading the complete Cthulhu series, having trouble with it. Are we talking like the HP Lovecraft? Like, and then like Mountains of Madness and stuff like that, full boy? Are we talking like very HP Lovecraft stuff? You posted it in Discord. Okay, so the time frame that that stuff was written in, it's very hard to follow because it's, well, number one, the guy was incredibly racist. The whole Lovecraft book, okay. I fucking love that stuff. I have like five different HP Lovecraft Anthology, like anthology, quote unquote books, whatever you want to call them, where they all have different versions of those stories rewritten. So I'm a huge H.P. Lovecraft fan, at least of his writing. Who wasn't back then? Yeah, that's true. It's so much narration. There's no uh, conversation and no, no describing the world exactly. Considering he was the guy that uh, inspired Stephen King. Is part of the reason I got into his content. He's like one of the main inspirations behind Stephen King. I think Stephen King just took his took his game and upped it. But I love Stephen King, yeah. But like you said, there's it's so much narration. It's all very I want to call it like world building, but there's like not really much world to build upon. Call of Cthulhu is like eight pages, yeah. It's a very short story. 
In the Mountains of Madness was really good, though. Was expecting it to be longer. That's what she said. But also, yes. Like 150 pages, yeah. Like the Pale King in yellow. Man, this is making me want to go into like a deep dive of reading. I really like reading and things like that, but I just really can't set aside time for it most most of it. Like reading for me, I'll read like a few pages into something and fall asleep. Cause my buddy's like, oh, we're taking a moment to sit down and do nothing. Okay, sleep. I hope you're ready for a nap. But it's funny, we're talking about Cthulhu, and I literally have a little, uh, a miniature statue of Cthulhu that's described in that, that book. Since I'm such a big fan of it, there's been a few times that, like, my buddies for my birthdays, like, have gotten me Cthulhu, like, little figurines and things like that. I'm definitely big into the, like, the scary horror, the... What's more cosmic horror stuff, I guess you can call it. Good old Niar Lethotep and all that stuff. Our melee damage is getting way better. And we're not fizzling a whole bunch on Drones of Doom. Ranger doesn't look level one. It's true. My uh, stream is lying to you. He was level one an hour and 58 minutes ago. False advertisement reported banned. I don't appreciate streamer lying to me. to get Miss Screechy Lady on us, too. Hey, we're fizzling less and less every time. It reminds me of a really country lady. I think the word you're looking for here is meth. Weird. She reminds you of a meth head. She kind of looks like the lady that rear-ended me about two weeks ago. And I don't mean that as an innuendo. She actually ran into my car. <laughs> this song, now I want to play FF10 again. It's a good game, right? I was going with their voice, but that too. It's kind of a twang, a country witch twang. 
Yeah, 10 is a really good game. I think it got trashed a lot because of Titus. So many people did not like Titus, especially like the English voice actor. But Blitzball, man. The time spent on Blitzball was so good. Such a sad fucking story, though. All the Final Fantasies, man. Late night Oakwind action. Oh, nice. You playing on Oakwind Pixel? Looking forward to Remastered Star Oceans coming out. No, I thought you. Were. Oh, no, no. This is on F, uh, FE if you're going to be. I'd like to see them make a prequel where you play as Jack, Baraska, and Aaron. Dude, that would be badass. That's a game that I would play. Little tips you right now. How was your pretzels, buddy? Yeah, the Jacked Braska and Aran storyline I think would be epic. Especially because they could like flash forward little bits and pieces and give us story that we never saw on Final Fantasy X. Even just some like the casual interactions between the characters. They could do so much with that, man. Oh, already light blue. Bruh. They were down. I might have had those cheesecake egg rolls and boneless. Oh, that sounds so fucking good, man. What well, we got for Xeno Gears Remaster? Okay. I'm going to say something that if anybody here has ever played this game before, you'll probably agree with me that it needs a remaster. Legend of the Dragoon. Legend of the Dragoon could really not just like use a remaster, it needs to have a remaster. Phenomenal game, man. You'll be happy to know the Chanter is level 114 already beat. Look at you, Pixel. Just you're coming in, coming in drunk, bringing me good news. Uh, no, I never played Xeno Gears. I think at this point, the game that I'm most excited and anticipating, aside from EverQuest, is uh, Dragon Age 4. I did. I really, really wish they didn't butcher this too. So we will have a guild hall channer buff bot this week. I'm so fucking happy for that, Pixel Man. Especially for characters like this, so I don't have to keep my enchanter logged in. I can just walk up and get boom. Give me those buffs, boom. If this two was like this one, it would have been a masterpiece. Yeah, literally the only thing. The main game I'm thinking that I'm excited for at this point, aside from like new ex new EverQuest content, is Dragon Age 4. But that's so far out, who knows. If 110 to 120 wasn't so AIDS, I would finish leveling some of the tunes on FE. It is very... It's very painstaking, man. It's because all the, 
it's all done with the expectation that you're gonna do the like partisan quest and the group missions and everything and not just fight and kill nice surprise hey what's going on slam how you doing yeah we're having a late night eq stream here it's saturday night so i'm we're having some good old gamer time You know, we haven't even had to bust out our mercenary yet. On the bright side, mage on Oakland is six now. Nice. Hey, have a good one, pool boy. Thanks for stopping by, man. One more kill and we're going to be done here. Let's go. All right, let's get out of here. Someone is selling an entire set of Spectral Lucklinite, including its non-vis, non-visible items and weapons. All 18 slots for 18 chrono. And that's almost worth it. Get the best gear, best non-vis, and the best weapons in the game. A lot of chrono, though. Jesus. Oh, it's for bards. Never mind. Ugh. Bard hater. Hey, I don't hate bards. This is just definitely not my main. Very much so not my not my main. Got the enchanter in his spectral gear today, waiting for him to hit 120. Nice. Bard, the next tune you're gonna level. Uh, I mean, I might do another bard here. I wouldn't mind leveling another bard. Oh, here. You know what? Let's go. I'm going to take my druid over and see what the hot zones are right now. Please don't be Skyfire. Please don't be Skyfire. Please don't be Skyfire. Level 40 is Emerald Jungle. 
45 is Scarlet Desert. 50 is Sebelus. 55 is the Deep. Ooh, 60 is Black Feather. Um, well, we can't get into Sebelus just yet because the level, the Deep is going to be a little bit too high level for us. Should make, uh, <laughs> where you have a, a bard named Karana West. Oh my god. <laughs> I don't know about Scarlet Desert, though. I don't know if that's going to be worthwhile. We can give it a try. Alright, let's go over to Scarlet Desert. Going back to Legend of Dragoon, I played that not too awful long ago. Really? I'm pretty sure I've still got the discs somewhere for that. Hmm. Levitate it is. Maybe? We have too many buffs on. I think we have too many buffs on. There we go. I'd love to see a remake of that game, man. I don't even really remember too much about it. I just remember how fun it was back in the day. And it had really cool, like, box art, the disc art. Let's get rid of that. Let's put our minion back out for our damage shield. Thirty-two to forty-five hot zone. Okay, here we go. Oh, we need to redo our self-clicky buffs as well. I really enjoy old-school RPGs when I'm not playing EverQuest. I'm playing through some more... Yeah. Dude. Ugh. Be playing Draken form with all those nice illusions. Uh, I actually really like Draken. I know a lot of people hate on it, but... Uh, I think Draken looks really cool. And, fu and plus, it really fits, like, my, my naturally emo aesthetic anyways. It, they, they're kind of derpy with their animations, but I really like how they look. Definitely different than the average person, but... Yeah, they're kind of derpy. So you don't want to sham in for the uh, ale bot after Enchanter? Uh, yeah, honestly, Shaman and Enchanter... Both of those would be phenomenal. Yeah, Slam, I agree. They're pretty derpy. They're not really that good for combat animations. I just really like the way that they look. Hmm, we need some higher level enemies. Here we go. Standing still, they're awesome. Yeah. 
Just got one of those emo game console things that has a ton of FF games on it. Looking forward to FF2, 6, and 7. Yeah. Man, if I could invest the time and effort into replaying FF8 fully and FF10 and FF102. Uh, I know a lot of people hate 10 too, but I'll, I'll play the hell out of 10 too, man. The new game plus mode with those items that you get, you just feel so damn powerful. If you never played six, it's great, yeah. And as one of the things that I still need to play on stream, I still need to play Champions of Norath for you guys on stream sometime. Since I've got that working here on my emulator. Yeah, Champions of Norath and uh, Champions of Norath Return to Arms. Yeah, the PlayStation. Yep. PlayStation 1, and I think it was PlayStation 2 for Return to Arms. I'm going to disappoint you all. I've never played any FF games, not one. Uh, I mean, I can't really say I'm disappointed, Pixel. There are, unfortunately... <sighs> Excuse me. There are, unfortunately, some gamers that have never had the glory of playing a, a Final Fantasy game, but all I really can say is that you're missing out if you're really saying that you're just never going to give it a try. I think it would be worthwhile, like a worthwhile experience to give it a try. Especially these days. Well, about two hours, the MMO. Yeah. Uh, FF 11 and 14 are like the two exceptions to the rule because they're both MMOs. With, when the new expansion, Dawn Call, or Dawn Trail, drops next summer, the that adds the final bit of... Uh, the final bit of single-player ability to the game, to where eventually, with the new expansion, you'll be able to play the entire MMO solo. Games of Norath was great. The Crouch Co-op was a lot of fun. It was, especially back in the day, if you had the multi-tap for your PlayStation multi-tap whatever you want to call it where you could play you could hook up and have four controllers and you could play with four people because that's what my friend group did we set it up so we could play with like three or four people and that was a lot of fun i played uh the barbarian which is funny because Barbarian and Champions of Norath was a class. Yeah, a lot of the older Final Fantasy games were all turn-based combat. So it definitely requires like a certain kind of attitude. Hey, thanks for the follow, DC. Thank you. Liking Baldur's Gate so far. Okay, so if you like Baldur's Gate, you might like the old Final Fantasy games too. If you if you really like getting invested into storyline, then Final Fantasy games are awesome. In my opinion. I've never really played a bad Final Fantasy game, but if I had to pick what my least favorite Final Fantasy would be out of the bunch would be Final Fantasy IX. I really wasn't a fan of anything that they did in Final Fantasy IX, really. It's the only one that I've never gone out of my way to re try to replay. Oof, that's a hot take, yeah. Not a big fan of IX at all. But my favorite is Final Fantasy VIII. So that is like the opposite of most people. A lot of people hate Final Fantasy VIII. Oh, 
but the best story out of any of the Final Fantasies. Final Fantasy XIV, baby. If you can make it through A Realm Reborn and you can make it to the good stuff, the whole story arc from Heaven's Word on to Endwalker, unreplaceable, at least for me. Fourteen doesn't count as an MMO. <laughs> eh. And it's funny because I've watched interviews with the developers of Final Fantasy XIV who have been developers for other Final Fantasy games before, and they hate that that's what everyone says. They're like, Final Fantasy XIV? It doesn't count. It's not a Final Fantasy. It's an MMO. It cracks me up. Or they're like Kingdom Hearts? Yes. Less goofy. But yes. They don't play the same, though. They definitely don't. This is making me want to sink my teeth back into some old Final Fantasy games. interrupting me. I actually need to bust out my mercenary here. Let's see here. If you have a PS5, check out Final Fantasy 16. Plays like Devil May Cry. Which, oh, which is so good. Because they actually have like a Devil May Cry developer on Final Fantasy 16. Such a good game. I loved Ochre Battle for SNES. Oh, and Final Fantasy Tactics? There you go. There's an old school. Good old Tactics, man. 45k. Nice, dude. Just like 25k to go. My poor tank, Mark. 21k, yeah. It's funny because so much of the, the universes these days are all based off of tactics. 
think they max at 66k right now. Um, I think it was 66k before Night of Shadows. And with Lorian's song, it's going to be just under 80,000. Oh, it's going to be way more than 6k a day. Yeah. Because rogues, rogues alone had, I think, just under 8,000 8, additional AAs. And hybrids always have a whole chunk extra over the rest. I think shamans will still be ahead as far as necessary AAs, though. What's the earliest you can do? Uh, well, there's there's no such thing as Journeyman 5 anymore, Meekin. They removed, they squished the whole line of mercenaries into just Apprentice and just Journeyman now. Uh, I think it was just earlier this year. Yeah. So now you don't have to worry. Now everything is Journeyman 5 or everything is Apprentice 5. There's no, there's no lesser. Yeah, it was a huge quality of life improvement. Definitely one of my favorite things that they've done this this year. gonna have to go up on one of the plateaus over here because we're fighting a whole bunch of really low level stuff. But yeah, now from level one, if you have a journeyman mercenary, it's like top tier mercenary. I think it's Kiss Assist, right? Yeah, we're gonna go up to one of the plateaus over here. There we go. Oh, there we go. Good old tank mercenaries make this so much easier. these buddies over here. That's intense, Pixel. No wonder you're getting so much EXP.
looking into botting for this group I'm thinking of making. That way I can switch between them based on what I want to play. I'm running AA spend to automatically spend AA points. Get those big numbers in, man. That is exactly why people are talking about what they are, Meekin. Is because depending on the point that you'll end up getting to, it's going to be either required that you make friends to play with or you box. Depending on the highest, the, you know, the highest level you end up getting to. Let me just put it that way. Because if we're talking only up to like the 80s or so, now nah, you don't need to box. But like 100 plus for sure. It gets so much harder after 100 if you're not boxing. Played in TOV as a solo zerker and I had a buddy who boxed an entire group who helped me with progression stuff. Yep. Red Guides is the way to go. A little bit money spent at first, but once you get the class plug-in boxes, it's a piece of cake. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, otherwise I would have just done nothing. Yeah. If I hadn't played with, like, the buddies that I did play with, some of these guys in chat through February and March and a bit of April, I never would have gone through some of, like, the Claws of Asian content and Terror of Luckland and some of the Night of Shadows stuff that I did. Paying for three to four accounts and red guides and... Ex yep. It gets really expensive. The only thing is, is if you do it right and you farm items and stuff like that, if you farm raids and things like that like I do on the weekends, it makes paying for things a lot easier. If you get the right farms in and you're doing things like over and over and over again, you can end up making money back in Chrono, and then you, it just pays for itself. But the problem is, is if it's like a time like this, I'm here, where it's very dead. Not many people are buying, not many people are selling. It gets much harder. Luckily, man on Oak one, so the live request is just kind of a side thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's the opposite for me. I am main on Fear and a V live, and all the other stuff, just side content for me. Would be cool to catch up eventually. Yeah. One thing I will tell people to do. I don't always necessarily encourage it, but I will say if you're ever interested in seeing the end game content, sometimes it doesn't hurt to pay for a power level to get up to max level. So say for Lorian Song, you boost a character up to 125, you get like group equivalent gear, you make it pretty decent, and then you can take that character and you can start farming the content that you want to. not the best option but the higher level you have a character the e easier it is to farm content it makes it easier to make the money back the whole thing just started as an experiment and you grew into a bigger experiment yeah
yeah, the more I come to zones like this, it's cool. It's nice to see these as like a different zone. There's really not good zones to level at. The respawn times are way too slow. They really need to go through and flesh out some of the a lot of these old school zones and make enemies drop more stuff and spawn quicker. A lot of these uh, zones could definitely do with dropping more stuff and spawning quicker. Cataclysm revamp for EverQuest? Yeah. Needs a drastic revamp. A lot of these old zones. Dude, a Cataclysm revamp for EverQuest would be so legendary. It would be so good. Because in addition to that, if they put the manpower in and they stat squished everything and level squished, I'd be happy to see the, the level cap return to like 70 and cut out so much of the fat of the game. That's kind of what they're doing with their current expansion, so I don't ever see it happening. It's definitely just building on more and more and more of what they've done in the past. I just don't ever see them having the manpower to stat squish. But they could literally cut out as far as I'm concerned, they could cut out everything after even House of Thule up to the most recent expansions and squish the levels all down to like content that you can do as you're at your leisure around 65 or 70. That'd be so much better. Of course, there's a whole lot of content they could just completely remove from the game. <clears throat> Prophecy of Roe, Underfoot. Just take those bitches out of the game. We don't need it. We'll, we'll just pretend that it's not canon anymore. What's considered high HP now is in the millions. Uh, with the high-end gear from Lorian's song, it probably will be. Because right now, I think raid tanks are like 800,000 HP. If not 800,000, like just under 800,000. Yeah, it's around 800,000 right now. So if you consider 125 with all the new AAs, and then in addition to all of the new gear, it'll probably be about, probably about a million. Yeah, it's nuts, yeah. Pets have one, one and a half million. Well, yeah, pets, yeah. But if, if we don't break into the millions now, it definitely will be at next expansion. There's just no doubt about it. I have 62.50 on my level 60 bard. I'm pretty jacked. <laughs> Well, because we'll have Enhanced Minion, what, 33? Because it's always plus two with every expansion they bring out. So we'll have Enhanced Minion 33 at that point. So I'm sure it'll be over two million for pets. Just with the exponential growth of everything. What really needs to be the case is they really need to also buff the hell out of mercenaries in higher level. They either need to make content easier or they need to buff mercenaries. Because mercenary tanks having only like 398,000 HP at level 125 on the beta test on the beta server, that's not going to cut it. 350,000 HP was like common group gear in Claws of Eshin. That, like, we're five expansions past that now, basically. Merc gear that's level appropriate would definitely help. Because mercenaries now have over a thousand AAs, too. A 
but mercenary tanks especially need to have like 700,000 HP. Like I said, either they need to make the content easier or buff mercenaries. Or start letting people use two mercenaries. If you could have a tank and a healer mercenary going at the same time, that would make content so much better. I think they're already on the pathway to it, because like I talked about earlier, in the beta, mercenaries now count towards your six-player minimum for raids and group content. So I already think they're leaning towards that. No, my haste. See, all these enemies that we've killed, we're, there's still no respawns. If this was a Serpent Spine zone, all, everything would already be back up that we've killed. If they want to make these zones worthwhile coming to, they just really need to like triple the respawn rate. Take everything and make it like a standard two minute respawn timer. and drop worthwhile gear more often. Across the board, yeah. Like, cause I would love to just go camp in Velks or something like that again too, but in the Serpent Spine zones, they all drop Defiant gear more often. They respawn almost immediately. Velks on the Bard for a few levels. Fucking love Velks. But 
but I don't have OP at the year, so it was pretty slow. Well, yeah. Plus, uh, TSS mobs drops sell for Hell's Cash. Uh, yeah, for Hell of Cash, yeah. Well, everything drops diamonds and gems and all that fun stuff. Like, even the guys that we've killed over here. That was 20 minutes ago, almost. They still haven't respawned. And the problem is, Sebelus is the level 50 uh, hot zone, but you can't zone into it until 47. So we're like at this really awkward point between levels. Yeah, Vilks is almost always like the go-to. There are just some zones I hate having to rely on. It's like Guck and Velks. Every single run through almost always relies on one of the two. Alright, Pixel. Have a good night, man. Enjoy your tipsy, tipsy sleep time. Yep. More stream in the AM. I'm sure we, sure we will be right back. As a matter of fact, I think it's best just to go ahead and call it quits now. It's already after 12 o'clock, so we're up about three hours past our normal bedtime. Uh, anywho's, guys, I appreciate y'all. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Abe, Pixel, Ominous, Day, Macon, Rhinos, I appreciate all you guys. Everybody else I missed appreciate y'all. Have a good night.